I go on Ariel's show yesterday, and or live, and prior to the show, Ariel sends out a tweet. And I like this about Ariel's format. I'm wondering if I should be doing that over here, which is to go live. He breaks his show into segments the same as I bring to you, but he does the initial piece live. Just a, just a little thought. I'd, I'd love your comments on that. And Ariel knows who his guests are going to be. And Ariel's not afraid on a Monday. He's not afraid to go six hours. He's done that. That's, that's routine. He will never not go four hours. I mean, it's, it's a big part of your day. Ariel is a institution with NMMA. I know a number of people. In fact, if I was to put this into a number, this would be a guess. But if I was to put it into a number between one championship, Bellator MMA, and the Ultimate Fighting Championship, I would I would estimate all combined, thirty percent of the staff watches Ariel live every Monday. It's a big deal. And he, but he puts his guests out. He does this on social media. I'm one of his guests. He always tries to get the winner of the main event from over the weekend. In this case, was Ilya Tapur. That was one of his guests. I know Tatiana Suarez was on there. Little lineup, Uncle Chael. So that gets put out to the world. I get a call right away, right? It gets put out that I'm going on aerial show. I get a call, and I, there's not a big buffer in there. That could be an hour, but but before that goes out and the show actually goes live, I'm guessing. But there's not a big buffer, and somewhere within that time, I get a phone call, and it's Mark Zuckerberg, who says. I see you're going on Ariel's show. I am going to be fighting this thing with Elon, the date for it, which is the only thing that we don't have. we got the two guys, and we know where we're going to fight. The only thing that we don't have is the win. I'm adding some words. This was verbatim, but they're going to do it at UFC 300. He's given me the info so that I can come on Ariel's show, which is a big show. And break it. I, I keep telling you the size of Ariel's show and how well that Ariel does things. Because that added to the validity. That added to the validity. If you were coming over to this sport and you were trying to do it in a respectful manner, which is what I feel Zuckerberg has done. See, everything is different for Zuck. Everything. As soon as he entered the grappling tournament and didn't tell anyone ahead of time, he made no special rules, no special weight, no special anything. He agreed to follow the rules of the event, which says you take on whoever else happens to show up that day, an announcer that you don't even know will call you to a mat and you will walk to the mat and you will commence combat. He did that. I mean, that puts him into a different category. But how respectful, and very few guys do do that. I can tell you other stories and guys just don't do that. They just don't. They manipulate it. They change it. They put in a special rule. They change the time. They'll do the match, but only in the back room. I mean, it just starts to get really weird. It's very uncommon, and it's an extremely respectful, right? You hear that word hide to martial arts all the time. But the way Zuck handled it was perfect. And it's the way all of you would have handled it. It was a regular man move, which would make sense. Even though he could get the biggest media that he wants, he'd get any media that he would then come and do it the way that our fights get announced, which is through Ariel live on a Monday. This goes in line. In my mind, I am also well aware that more likely than not, I'm being catfished. However, somebody does that, whatever you do. I mean, Ariel was talking like it was AI. And they tied Zuckerberg's voice. And I mean, I guess they could. I, I never spoke to Zuckerberg on the phone. I, I mean, my buddy could call up with a handkerchief over the phone like Bo Duke used to do. When he didn't know, I want Roscoe Pico trained to know it was him. And I, I wouldn't know the difference. It was very quick. I wouldn't do that to somebody. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call and say I was somebody else. So, okay, fine. Maybe I would believe it. But I don't want to look like a fool in front of you guys. I have a level of credibility. So I told Ariel this. You know, hey, could be getting catfished. But here's what's going on. And bigger story here, guys. For me, for me, I'm just personalizing. Let's tell you about my day. But I didn't reveal anything. 
I made a claim. I had a phone call from somebody that said they were Zock. I wasn't sure it was. But I had no problem playing along and repeating what was said because there wasn't anything said. We've got a date. We're going to fight UFC 300. That was my big news. And my, my, my news is just to repeat what had already been put out. In fact, the first time I saw that, I believe it was Michael Chiesa. I want to get credit to the right guy. I believe it was Michael Chiesa two days prior had said, hey, if you guys are going to do this, here's the date, here's the time, come do UFC 300. The reason I'm sharing that is, throw out a word, catfish. Zuck called me. I got pranked. I'm a fool. It, I mean, th throw it out any way that you want. What difference does it make? What difference does it make if Zuck called me or one of you pranked me, what difference does it make? It supported the idea that he had. So why did Zuck and his team tell TMZ that he did not call me. Why? What, what difference would it make? And as I ask you that with a tone of confusion, there could be an answer. There could be something out there that we don't know, guys, where CEOs under the rules, possibly even regulated by the SEC, can't do and say public things. If, if that were a rule, if there is a rule against board members, leadership, executives, however it gets worded that would encompass these two positions, if there was a rule about the way that they would conduct themselves to other people in that position, for sure violence would be included. Can we, can we just assume that? And this is a very real thing. If you guys haven't heard of this, I can personalize real estate here in the state of Oregon, you cannot use bad language, which would be what you guys would think of as a four-letter word. You cannot use that one realtor to another. But then if you're in the presence of people that are not realtors, but you are, you cannot verbally disparage a fellow realtor or their business practices. You cannot do that. Even if they're a crook, you can't say they are. There's a way. There's a way that we do with, that. We do that through the real estate board. We don't do that within public. You ever thought, oh, all these realtors are so nice and they're so nice to each other? Well, a lot of truth to that. I had a good experience too. But there's a rule behind it. You guys might not have known that. And so it's it's not out of the realm of realisticness for me to think that somebody stepped in to say, hey, you and Elon under this clock, cannot come out and do these things. So therefore, your call to jail or jail's assessment of your call or jail's silly claim, jail's a fool, of your call needs to be corrected. And they did that. They told TMZ that he didn't call. But they didn't tell him TMZ what difference does it make? I didn't make a claim that he said something about his mama. I didn't make a claim that he was putting up X amount of money. I didn't make a claim that he was giving tickets away. I didn't make any kind of a claim at all that would put him in a position where he needed to come out and push back. At all. We were told that he accepted a challenge over the weekend. That was Saturday. That was a day called Saturday. And he didn't go to TMZ and say that didn't happen. By the way. So I said that he told me that it was going to happen. The same thing. I said the same thing 
And he wanted that corrected. Now, if there's a rule and they can't talk to each other in a certain way and it just happens to be above our our simpleton minds over here, we would have to give him that. And we'd have to lay out at that. So if it's that, Whatever comes out of my mouth next, I would be in the wrong. That would be very reasonable. But it'd also be reasonable to tell TMZ, I'm correcting this statement through sources. This isn't me calling. I'm going to have somebody else call you to tell you that I didn't make a call. Well, that, that's that's hearsay at this point. And that's a weird thing to do. I'm saying Zuck called me. I'm saying I can prove it on my phone. That's a big claim by me. That's a big, big claim by me. He's saying that he did it. Well, no, no, he didn't say he did it. He had somebody else say that he did it. Well, now now you got hearsay. And it's a little bit weird. It's a little bit weird. You you guys want to know why it's weird? You want to know what I'm holding back? I think he called. That's what I'm holding back. I think him running this back and saying I didn't call, I think that's the part of this whole story that's BS. I think he called. I don't think it was a catfish. I never thought it was a catfish. I don't think my phone right now that shows who called is wrong. I think if it was a prank, if you want to go even further with this world of speculation, that's all that we have. I don't know that you can convince a jury, but you will be our jury. Let's see what you think. I don't think somebody would prank me to get a Zoom link to Ariel's show, which is what he did, where they could come on live and then not use it. I mean, that would seem like a very elaborate plan that would have a payoff for the huckster, which is they pop on on the Zoom link and they got their pants, they're showing us the moon, right? You guys know that, the moon where somebody shows you their butt. They just had us, that would have been great, but they didn't do that. They didn't do anything like that. They didn't say anything weird. They didn't sound weird. They didn't make a claim that was weird. And when I reaccounted the story, neither did I. It was really simple. So what part through hearsay, right? You got to understand, I said that he called. He didn't say he hasn't called. He had somebody else say that he hasn't called. That's weird to me. Weird to me. If you guys saw the interview with Ariel, I was very, very supportive. I was very defensive of Zuck. Other people in the sport have teased him. Fighters who were signed have teased and begrudged the idea of him multiple times. I never did. I never have. I like Mikey. I think it was a good hire. I thought it was really cool how he did the jujitsu thing, and I think he wants to answer for the challenge that was issued. These are all things that I respect, which I said. But somebody wants to take back that that happened. So what part of it are they taking back? Was it me? Is this personal? Is this me? Was that I was talking to Ariel and it's something personal about him and you didn't want it revealed through his show? Was it the challenge and the sport that was agreed to two days prior? What, what part of this did you not like? What part of it did you think was wise to take back and leave me to potentially look like a fool thinking that you weren't going to get paid back for that? Somewhere along the way, someone in an office thought they should call and say that they speak for him to TMZ a third arm and deny that the call happened. Why? What difference does it make? 